Okay. Okay, here we have a more complicated projectile motion problem. This is about as complex as we're going to see in uh, AP Physics B. Um, so copy down the question because I'm going to be deleting the actual um, text here so I have room to solve this. Uh, and then also over here I, on the right hand corner I wrote down two important ideas that we'll be using and you might want to make note of this as well because I'll be deleting that. Um, the first idea, time in the X and time in the Y, it's always the same, just meaning if we pick in, like a point right here at the highest point, um, the time it takes for the ball to reach the highest point is the same in the X as it is for the Y. Uh, and that's true for all points. And then the second idea is a trig idea, it's a trig identity, sine over cosine equals tangent. Mm -hmm. We're going to be using that to simplify the, uh, the math. Okay, so let's make some room to solve our first question. And the first question is, find uh, the initial velocity of the soccer ball. Um, all we're given is that the, the angle that the soccer ball is kicked at is 38 degrees. And then we're told that it travels horizontally uh, 95 meters and then barely passes over a wall that is 10 meters high. So this point right here is going to be a very valuable point because at this location we have the X displacement and the Y displacement of the ball. Um, so at, at this location right there we know that the Y displacement is 10 and that's positive 10 and the X displacement is 95. And remember, all displacement cares about is starting point and ending point. So for the vertical, it's not factoring in, you know, it's not the whole distance traveled. It's simply from the starting vertical position to the ending vertical position. So we need to use this data to figure out what this initial velocity is right here. So let's make some room on the canvas. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do in solving for this initial velocity is um, we're going to write equations that are true for the x and true for the y. Now, the first kinematic tends to be the most useful one for situations like this. And as I showed in class, for the x direction, oops, we need to put this back on, for the x direction, we have x equals vxt. Now, this vx right here is actually cosine 38 times v initial, and v initial is what we're looking for. So I'm going to put that down here. x equals cosine 38 v initial. So that is vx, uh, then multiplied by time. Now, for the y direction, I'm going to write the same equation. y equals 1 half gt squared plus vy initial t. So it is the same equation, uh, only in, over here there was no x acceleration, so this first part disappeared. Okay, so what we have to do, as I said earlier, time, these times are the same time in the x and time in the y are equal. So I'm going to take this x equation that we wrote and I'm going to solve it for t. So t is x over cosine 38 v initial. I'm going to take this and plug it in there and there. So here's where the algebra gets a little bit intense. So all of that is square. That looks a little bit 
a little bit scary, but not too bad. And then VY initial, so right here we have VY initial. VY initial is equal to sine 38 V initial. So we're going to plug that in right here. Sine 38 V initial. And then time is X over cosine 38 V initial. So now at this point, <clears throat> we can simplify this. So the V initials cancel. We have top and bottom. Those V initials cancel out. And then as I mentioned at the start of the problem, we have sine divided by cosine. So sine 38 over cosine 38, we can simplify to tangent 38. So I'm going to rewrite this again, and I'm going to clean it up a little bit. So this is going to be gx squared over 2 cosine 38 squared v initial squared plus tangent 38 x. Now, looking at this equation, the only thing, so again, we're, we're focusing on this point up here, and the nice thing about that point, as the ball passes the wall, we have x and y. We have the x displacement and we have the y displacement. So if you look at this equation that I'm boxing, we have everything except v initial, which is what we're looking for. So normally I say, do the, you know, what I always say in class is do the algebra first. Um, this is a situation where I, I think it's actually easier to plug the numbers in at this point. So we're going to plug the numbers in. So let me, I'm going to shrink this down so I have some room. So we're going to take what I just did, shrink it down a little bit. And then we're going to pick up from this box, this, uh, this equation here. So we're going to plug the numbers in. So we have, um, so working off, working off this guy right here, I'm looking at this equation y is 10, g is negative 9.8, x is 95, uh, cosine 38 is cosine 38, um, x is 95. So I'm going to go up here. So we have 10. And you know what? I'm going to be really bad and just leave, leave the units off here. Otherwise, it's going to get really messy. Um, so 10, and all, all the units work. You know, meter, meter, everything's good. All the units are fine. So we have uh, 10 equals negative 9.8, x is 95, squared, 2 cosine 38 squared, v initial squared, plus tangent 38, that's an 8, and then x is 95. Okay, so now it's just algebra. So I'm, I'm going to simplify this down for you. What this basically ends up being when you punch everything in is 10 equals negative 71,216 point two three four divided by v initial squared. So what I did is I took all of this and simplified it. And then plus um, 74.22 point two two two. That is this part right here. All right, so simplifying further, you, you know, do the algebra, you get v initial squared equal to 1,108.907. And then take the square root of both sides, and we find V initial. V initial is 33.3 .3 repeating meter per second. And we have the angle already. Velocity always has an angle. The angle is 38 degrees. 
And that's number one. That's the hardest part. Once you've done that, the remaining two questions are not as bad. So now we're on to number two, and um, I set this, I, I, I put the information in that we've already solved for, and I actually made a, a slight mistake uh, at the end of the first question. I said the, velo the initial velocity was 33.3 .3 repeating. It's actually 33.300. Um, all right, so here's what we have. So we, we figured out that the initial velocity, this black vector here, is 33.3 .3 meters per second, and I've broken that into x component, y component, just using sine and cosine. So this vx initial, I used cosine 38 times 33.3. .3. And for vy initial, I used sine 38 times 33.3. .3. So we have our starting x velocity. And, and remember, x velocity does stay constant. Uh, and we have our starting y velocity, which does not remain constant. That's going to change throughout. Um, the ball's motion. Okay, so the second question is to find um, time, the time it takes the ball to go from here to here, uh, to where it passes over the wall. So we're going to, the easiest way to do this is with the uh, x direction. We do have enough information to solve it with the y, but the nice thing about the x is that there's no acceleration. And we have x equals vx t. And right up here, we have our velocity x already solved for. So rearranging for time, we get x over vx, which is 95 meters. That's how far it travels horizontally, um, divided by velocity x, 26.241 meter per second. And this gives us a time in the air to the wall of 3.62 seconds. So this takes us to number three, the last question. Finding uh, the velocity of the ball as it passes over the wall. So we want to find this velocity vector right here, this b where my cursor is pointing, this black vector. Now we're going we're, we're to be focusing here. We already know what Vx is. Vx never changes. It's 26.241 meter per second. And we need to solve for Vy, which is not difficult because we now have the time to this point. So finding Vy, the y velocity as the ball passes over the wall, we'll call that Vy final, with over here being Vy initial. So the kinematic that's going to do this is Vy final equals Vy initial plus gt. Vy final is going to be equal, so we plug in Vy initial, 20.502 meters per second plus negative 9.8 meter per second squared. And then our time to the wall is 3.62 seconds. So this gives us Vy final equal to negative 14.974. Okay, so let's put that up here. Negative 14.974 meters per second. So at this point, we do Pythagorean theorem, which I'm not going to show. You know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You're just relating the three sides of the triangle. And this velocity that we're looking for, once you do Pythagorean theorem, the final total velocity as the ball passes the wall is 30.2 meters per second. And then we have to calculate the angle, which I'll show real quick. 
theta equals tangent inverse 14.974 over 26.241. This gives an angle of 29.7. That's a 9. So we would say 29.7 degrees, and this is described as below the horizontal. And again, the reason for that, if this is the horizontal right here, the ball, the velocity of the ball is pointing below the horizontal at an angle of 29 degrees. And that concludes, oops, 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 I didn't mean to cross that out. Let's fix that. That concludes this problem.